Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and today's lesson will be about scientific notation. In physics we happen to deal with numbers which are very large or with numbers which are very small. Let's make an example. Astronomy is a field of physics that deals with studies some of the largest things we know, including galaxies. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, has an estimated diameter given by this number. 9461 followed by 3, 6, 9, 12, 14 zeros. On the other hand, nuclear and particle physics, they deal with the smallest objects we know. One of them is the electron. So if you happen to measure the mass of an electron, you will come out with this number. Now, you can already imagine that you were an astronomer or a particle physicist, writing these numbers in such a form would be very impractical. So scientists has dev have devised a way of writing the same number in a much more compact way. How? Let's see. We're going to use the powers of 10. As you well know, we can represent the powers of 10 in this exponential form. 10 can be written as 10 to the power of 1. 100 can be written as 10 to the power of 2. 1000 can be written as 10 to the power of 3. And a million can be written as 10 to the power of 6. And it's very easy because you just have to count how many times you have to move your decimal point to write to the digit 1. The same works for numbers which are smaller than 1. 0 0.1 is 10 to the power of minus 1. 0 0.01 is 10 to the power of minus 2. 0 0.001 is 10 to the power of minus 3. And finally, 0 0.000001, a millionth, is 10 to the power of minus 6. And as you can see again, I get this number by counting how many times I'm moving my decimal point to the right of the digit 1. And I'm getting a negative number because I'm going in this direction. I will get a positive number if I'm moving in this direction. So let's get back to the previous numbers. So let's see how we can rewrite the diameter of the Milky Way and the mass of an electron using scientific notation, or as we also like to call it, standard form. This is a number as previously written, and this is how we write it in scientific notation. As you can see, we write the first digit. The first digit in scientific notation has, has to be bigger than zero, but smaller than 10, so 9 is fine. Then we put our decimal point, we write the rest of the non-zero numbers, and then what you do? You multiply by a power of 10. How do we come out with the number 17? Why it's 10 to the power of 17? Simple, you just have to count how many times the decimal point goes from here all the way to here. And you can see it's 17 times. Likewise, I will rewrite the mass of the electron as 9, again, bigger than 0, smaller than 10, followed the decimal point, followed by the other non-zero digits, times 10 to the minus 30 because we're going backwards, no? The decimal point now is going to the right. And as you can see, this is a much more compact way of writing these two very important 
numbers So let's see some rights and wrongs, just to set the record straight. Let's imagine a number, 3,470,000. This is what we call the full form. So this is the opposite of scientific notation. Now, we can write this number as 34.7 times 10 to the third, or 0.347 times 10 to the seventh or 3.47 times 10 to the 6. Now mind you, these are all legitimate ways of writing the same number. But this is not scientific form because this number is bigger than 10. This is not scientific notation because this number is 0. This is the number written in scientific notation. In one of the following lessons, we will expand on the subject of rounding up and the use of significant digits. So what is the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to transform numbers into scientific notation, or also as we call it, standard form. Following, we will see the units of measurement. So now that we know how to deal with numbers, we're going back to represent physical quantities. And finally, we're going to see how we're going to measure these physical quantities.